Hello again, Joanna O'Leary here from Dollface Pottery. I am, this is March 6th, 2024, and I have another kiln opening. This, uh, in this kiln, let me see my notes here. There are, uh, well on top, there's a 24 slot egg tray, a deviled egg tray. There are whale tail test tiles, well they're Christmas decorations, but they're test tiles for me. Um, uh, and, and they're kiln fillers actually. And there are mugs uh, with some regular combos and I tested out a couple of mugs that I wasn't really satisfied with for um, using as a glorified test tile. And we'll see how that works out. I have a couple of matte black bowls in here and a sculptured flat fish for a wall uh, art and some test tiles and tapas plates so let's get to it put my notes right there okay first of all uh, are the four whale tail test tile slash christmas decorations and those have the base is two times spectrum moroccan blue it's a celadon but it's a uh, very opaque and this has two times Mako salt, Himalayan salt over. So it's quite interesting. It's like a, this reminds me of, of Amico Bluestone actually. A little bit of micro crystallization there. So that's two times Himalayan salt over two times Moroccan blue by spectrum. So the base on all of these whale tails is um, Spectrum Moroccan Blue. So this is Spectrum Autumn Purple times two over the Spectrum Moroccan Blue. Now the, the Spectrum Moroccan Blue didn't turn out really dark like it normally turns out because I think <clears throat> the kiln probably ran hotter than normal. Normally it's cone six with a 15 minute hold and that's what I did with this one. I'm thinking because it took so long it ran hotter. So this is Spectrum Autumn Purple over Moroccan Blue. Next one is Amoco Textured Turquoise over Spectrum Moroccan Blue. And the last one is Mako Night Moth over Spectrum Moroccan Blue. That was uh, pretty, you know, Night Moth is pretty stable and, and uh, Moroccan Blue is stable as well. So I'm trying to show you without some glare. I have white tissue paper put over my ring light so that the glare is less on the pottery on shining pottery. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the 24 slot uh, deviled egg tray. This is for my uncle and aunt. And it was the first time trying it out. No cracks at all. This is just the, the raw clay bottom with all the egg slots. And the front is two times spectrum, look how big it is. <laughs> two times spectrum Moroccan blue with light flux around the rim you can see and around the rims of the egg divots and then splashes of moroccan blue over that just splashes with a brush just to clean my brush really so i think that turned out really well it's got 24 slots so a whole dozen eggs can be doubled and served in this platter i like it i'm going to be making more um, I made the mold with uh, GR Pottery Forms. Um, I think it's the platter, 13 by 17 platter or something. Um, and then I, I bought 24 half wooden hen eggs from Amazon and then hot glued them down on top of the form. And so it's a permanent deviled egg tray form. I like it. 
the ooh, very big. This uh, this was one of these mugs that I used as a glorified test tile because I didn't like the 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 largeness of the mug. It's very large, it's about eighteen ounces. And I'm glad I put a cookie underneath. I saved my shelf. Look at the big drips. So this is it is Moroccan blue as a base with some iron luster over and um, spectrum sangria on top. This is where all the pink and everything is. Then uh, some pearl white by spectrum. Pearl white runs like the Dickens, so keep that in mind. And I will certainly keep that in mind for future mugs. Anyways, nice colors, but it's trash. Oh, again, this is um, fish mugs. Uh, I colored in the fish, like with uh, some watercolor technique with, with pink on the top and then some green on the this part of the fish. This is Blue Midnight times two. So you'll see the Blue Midnight here. And then Iron Luster over the Blue Midnight with a bit of oatmeal on top. So it really ran. Oh, I tried to be very careful, but you never know. Like where the kiln ran a little bit too hot. Um, here's the cones. Look at that. That's... That's why, but it's beautiful. I, I love it. Look at the fish. Oh, fish are really nice. I'm going to be trying some of these and then using more stable glazes in the future. But it's just an experiment, really. So that's the cone pack. Cone five, cone six, cone seven. So I went to a um, cone six and a half. So I put it at cone six with a 15 minute hold, which I normally do to uh, try to get rid of pinholes. This is Sky Celadon, my, one of my fish textured original mugs. Sky Celadon, Norse blue on the inside and light flux on top. Same with this one, Norse blue on the inside sky celadon of course i have uh, obsidian into the texture and then white back and the, the light flux and norse blue on top this is just a uh, fish transfer that i didn't color in the fish so just left the fish black and white sky celadon times two probably should have went with three three um, wasabi celadon on the inside. This is a bit out of the round. That happens a lot. And my chop on the bottom. I do like those fish. They're cute. Of course, they're very appropriate to Newfoundland. Rainforest celadon. With a little bit of blue snowflakes on the handle. See that? and a little bit on top. Didn't want to go too heavy with the blue snowflakes because it tends to run. Blue snowflakes is by uh, Laguna and it's great on plates because you see the crystallization in a flat surface, but uh, I usually use it on some plates. This one is a bit over fired by the look of it. It's, it's Sky Celadon. I did put two or three coats on that, but it's over fired because it's, it got too hot. I love those little fish. I, of course, you know, I have a lot of fish themed things. See, it's birch on the inside. Mm -hmm. See, that's the way spectrum blue is supposed to, to, to look. This is um, spectrum Moroccan blue times three. It's a lot like uh, Amico cobalt celadon. So it's a more opaque. You still see the clay body through, but it uh, covers up a lot of the texture, especially in my original textured mugs. And this is Spectrum Pearl White. 
not pearl white, sorry, just spectrum white. Good for the inside of a mug. This is autumn purple times two. Um, similar to Smoky Merlot by Amico, I think. This is a stumpy codfish. It's just a shot glass. It looks big, but it's not really. It's just a, a shot glass slash test tile with my stumpy codfish on there, which is an original stamp that I've made. The Spectrum White on a vertical surface. I like, I like how the texture slightly opaque but the texture looks good that'd be nice on a dinner plate or something with some texture on the rim so this is a matte black it's the first time i've ever used something like this it has a few blisters there or a couple of blisters anyway but it's a matte black bowl uh, it has texture so you can slightly see the texture. It's a bit opaque, but you can slightly see the texture. And a matte black, of course, has less glare. It's kind of a satin finish. Satin matte black by Amico. So that's three times. Um, and there's a little blister there. It's not a pinhole, but it's a blister. But, um, you know, a satin matte dinnerware is a real thing craze right now. But what I'd do probably for a plate is I'd probably make a streak of clear um, just to accentuate, just to have something to a uh, focal point, really. I like that. And the texture was a lot, very heavily textured, but it's very, barely being able to be seen, really. It's cerulean times two over Mako sandstone. I don't like that. Mm -mm. Not my cup of tea at all. But, you know, that's what test tiling is for, hey? This is just two times sandstone by Mako. So these, the, the sandstone has those crystals in there. Uh, you can't even see my poor old stumpy cod. He's in murky water by the looks of it. This is Cerulean uh, Celadon by Spectrum on the inside with pearl white over, one times pearl white over. Not too fussy about that either. The cerulean, uh, cerulean on the outside is nice with light flux. All of this clay uh, for the plates and platters, it is Pottery Supply House 519 Stoneware. And for the mugs, it's always Tucker's uh, Mids smooth stone wear. All right. I think that would be good with, you know, combinations and things. I'll have a number of these bowls to give out to repeat customers. And this is Spectrum Cerulean Celadon times two. So very similar to a light aqua by Amico. This shelf is a sculptured fish I've done um, from, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Vaughn Smith in Nova Scotia, but he does a lot of sculptured fish on the side of his pottery shop or pottery studio or gallery. I'm, I'm not sure if the, his studio and gallery are the same building, but um, you know, that makes people stop and go into his shop. It's a really smart thing. So anyway, I just I wanted to fool around, you know, February blahs. Oh, this is hot actually. <laughs> so there it is. Oh, I love them. Yay. So they have, he has two holes, one right here, one right here so they can put screws in there. Uh, I'll probably put him on my shed or something or yeah, neat. So, um, what I did was I used, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, underglaze. Yeah. Underglaze on the fins and the, yeah, the fins and then his face first. And I, and I did that at the leather hard stage and then bisque fired it. And then that kept the color. So then I just put 
some clear over the fins. And this is on the face was, uh, was yeah, that's the underglaze. And then on the body part, and this is underglaze as well, yellow. On the body part, I put, um, that is the green satin patina by Mako. I love that. And that is a hibiscus gloss chino by uh, Amico, actually. This is the satin patina times one. This is the satin patina times two. What else is there? That's just clear. And this here is just, uh, just the underglaze that I used. The Spectrum underglaze. Stroke and coat, I mean. Mako stroke and coat underglaze here. I love him. He's so cute. Some kiln wash on here. This is one of my tappa plates. So I'm, I'm experimenting with tappas plates, which are just small oval plates that I'm making. The, these ones, uh, these ones are good. And the texture is certainly food safe because it's very, the texture is very slight. This is Storm Celadon times two, two thick coats by Amico. And you can see the humpback whales. You can't, you can see it better in, in real life than you can under the glary lights, but I'll try to show the humpback whales there. I think that would be fun to eat off of, especially in a restaurant. And the back is just beer clay that's burnished. I burnished it to make it really smooth. And then what I did at, after I bisked, I put on a mask, I wet down um, a grinding disc and I make, made sure it was completely flat. So test tiles on flat surface. I had texture on this as well. Uh, you can probably just catch a little dragonfly there, but it certainly uh, covers up the texture because I had more texture on that. That's Mako Sandstone, times two. Not really fussy on that. Maybe for planters or something like that, I would use it um, like as the base because it's very stable. And then, you know, use a dynamic glaze combo over that. Uh, this is um, turquoise, Amico turquoise underglaze, wipe back. And then, so it's just beer raw clay, really. And then, of course, ancient copper, which... They don't make any more. Oh, I think they're going. They're trying to formulate a new formula for ancient copper. Copper, but oh, just I just love ancient copper. It's just beautiful. I have two bottles left. Oh. Another text uh, test tile, autumn purple, by Spectrum times two. So here you go, and it covered up. It's opaque. Covered up my dragonflies. Now the dragonfly texture wasn't very deep because it's just a like a coaster type thing, flat coaster. But uh, I like it. I like, I like. It's very similar to Smoking Merlot to me. Oh, wow. This tapas plate also burnished on the underside. Uh, basically covered up my, that's cerulean, uh, the cerulean by, uh, celadon by spectrum. Uh, and it's three coats and you can barely see, see the fish. Can you see the fish? You can barely see the fish there. See them? See them? Ah, he's very... You can see it, but just barely. Um, hmm. So put, I put Mako Light Flux on the Cerulean, so it comes out like a light blue, actually. Expected it to be white. And then the Cerulean on the base plate. It's certainly food safe because you can't feel any texture. And I carved, I, I slightly carved into the plate to draw the fish with a, with a, um, a carving tool. Rainforest times two. Amico Rainforest times two with uh, one small bit of uh, 
Mako Light Flux. So this is a fish texture. So you can just, it's just fish that it's uh, vertical. Can you see it, see? School of fish. So that's rainforest times two with light flux, just a bit of light flux on the rim. I didn't want it to go down over my texture. So that's another tapas plate. Burnished on the on the other side. This is a ginkgo leaf plate. And oh, it's glacier. Glacier blue, Mako Glacier Blue with light flux on the rim. And the light flux kind of made it a light green around the ginkgo leaves. And the texture, you can't even feel the texture, but you can see it. I love ginkgo leaves. This is another matte black, uh, satin matte black. Has another blister. Oh, it's just so frustrating. See that little blister there? But I do like the satin mat for a little plate like that or dinnerware if I can get rid of those blisters. And like I said before, I'd probably make a little streak of clear um, through the plate. But I, I'm, I'm going to have to sieve my glaze, I think, because uh, I've had that matte black for a while. And, uh, you know, it does have a few little lumps and bumps in there. Same on the bottom, matte black. You've seen this combo before because I've done a, a dinner set. I'm adding to my own plates. This is just a little luncheon plate. Um, it has two times sapphire float, one time blue rutile, and one time around the rim, around the carved rim. Make a light flux, which which kind of works with the, the light flux to sort of swirl towards the center of the plate. And on the back is a combination of wasabi and rainforest and clear. The wasabi is a bit too stark for me. Spectrum pearl white times two on a flat surface. I like that. It's opaque. Uh, it covers up texture, but you can still see the hint of texture. There's a dragonfly there. You can see it, you know, more up close and in person. You can see the little dragonfly peeking through there. So that wouldn't be nice for dinnerware or the texture of a mousse. This is Sangria by Spectrum times two. You can see the mousse texture there. See the mousse? The antlers, there's a an eagle flying next to him. Sangria. On the flat surface, it's a bit, this is the, on the bowl, Sangria. Look at the difference. Now it's a different shelf, so it probably didn't reach as high, but look at the difference. Same clay body. Wow. You know what this is? This is autumn purple and this is sangria. Huh. Yeah, because I'm just comparing the autumn purple to the sangria here. Autumn purple, sangria. And then those are both autumn purple. One more. Cerulean Celadon times two for this little coaster, little cute coaster. So it's uh, not a big shine on uh, on this Celadon. It's like almost like, um, I guess with more layers, it's only two layers, but it certainly covers evenly. This was just a little tester or coaster. I use coasters a lot in my home. So any test tiles that I make like this that are totally flat, I'll use them as coasters. So this is just a, scr a scraffito carving with ceruli um, Spectrum Cerulean Celadon times two. And that's it, folks. Um, you know, a lot more to um, 
this particular kiln opening. Uh, let me know, uh, comment on what your favorite piece is. That's what I like are the tapas plates for sure. The tapas plates, my regular dinnerware luncheon plate. Um, of course, the fish is my favorite, one of my favorites. And this was the first time ever me making uh, an egg tray. So I have to say that this is my favorite. So until next time, uh, I promise I'll get to my demo uh, videos uh, for making clay. It's just that I've uh, had, you know, I've been doing a lot of glazing lately because I'm trying to get rid of all my, my things on my bis shelf. But this was a new make. So anyways, until next time, bye.